Hello folks, I wanted to give you a few quick tips and tricks on some uh, shooting methods as far as uh, hand holding uh, for a low light using a telephoto. Now this is a 345 on a D700. You obviously could use a telephoto like 7300 um, or any one of a number of other telephoto lenses. Now you notice by the way how I'm holding this camera. If you plan on actually doing any running or jogging, you notice that people are holding this camera and call it uh, the heart hug. Uh, it's got some other names, but uh, you're protected as far as protecting your Nikon. And when it bumps it, it's not bumping into things. People aren't uh, able to slash it and steal it. When you're not shooting, you're uh, on a site and moving. Um, the reason that a lot of the filter hoods are damaged is because people, even though I've got a, uh, a black rapid sling on here, you know, if you're jogging, do a little walking, things are swinging around, bumping into doorways, so like this, okay? So, let's go over one methodology first, then we'll go over three more and uh, give you some uh, real quick pointers on how to improve low light uh, shooting techniques uh, with your telephoto lens if you don't have a monopod or tripod with you. And this is typically the case, like if you're shooting indoor rock concerts, it's just too much, you know, an orchestra, uh, some sort of uh, indoor event where they won't allow you to bring a monopod or a tripod. You have to be innovative, even if you have an f2.8 lens, you still have issues, unless you want to crank the ISO up to absurd levels. Um, you still have issues with shake, okay, so, especially if you're doing flash photography. Um, here's a few techniques. Now, one, I want you to look at my hand here, my left hand. Depends on whether you're right hand shooter or left hand shooter. You see this? And I'm actually locking this underneath the camera. Now, what a lot of people typically do is they'll actually, and I used to give archery lessons, and used to give shooting lessons, and also used to be a concealed carry. I still am making the concealed carry instructor's license, but I give uh, shooting lessons out in a shooting range. But a lot of people actually see them holding a telephoto like this. The only issue that you have here, even with vibration reduction, is that you have an issue with excessive shake. Why? Because you have too much contact. Now, if you actually notice uh, professional archers, when they're actually holding their bow, they have its minimum contact point. If you actually look at their left hand or their right hand, depending on what sort of shooters they are, they actually have their hand on as little a contact point, contact surface, with the riser of the bow, whether it's recurve or compound, doesn't matter. You'd think that someone would be wanting masterful control. The, the same thing applies into photography shooting as it does to real life shooting of firearms, and that is a firm handshake. The firm handshake uh, philosophy is that you want control, but you don't want excessive control. What happens is you actually have muscles fighting each other. So when someone's actually holding a telephoto lens like this, you'll actually notice as I'm actually trying to zoom in that I have too much contact. I got my entire hand around the barrel. You superficially think, well, that makes sense because you're trying to prevent shake. But just the opposite's occurring. You know how many muscles you actually have in your hand? You've got a lot of them. Okay, and they're constantly fighting back and forth. Okay, one's twitching, the other one's twitching the other direction. You know, with shaky shots. I want you to take a look at this. It might look like some sort of a karate move, okay? See what I'm actually doing with the lens here? Now, what am I doing with my elbow? I'm bringing it in to my body, okay? Now, you see how much more steady that is? Now, let's compare that to this, which is what you'll typically see people do, okay? Got both shoulders out. What most people are doing. You see how much the lens is shaking? You got a bunch of muscles fighting each other for support of the lens. Whether it's a really heavy telephoto lens or whether it's like a 7300, which isn't that heavy. Same thing's true in vertical shots. You see that? What I'm actually doing? Okay. Please remember that, okay? Now, here's the second technique. You got uh, elbow hug and you got wrist hug, okay? Wrist. You see what I did there? I use my non-dominant shooting hand to grab my elbow. I typically use this when I'm shooting something low. Weaver stance also. Dominant foot, 12 o'clock. Non-dominant foot, 10 o'clock. Okay? Back to position one. Elbow grab. 
And I use this for shooting low. So much more steady. Now, let's do an upper wrist grab, okay? Let's do two wrist grabs. I'll show you the upper one first. See what I'm doing here? Birds, wildlife, something up high. Now, another wrist grab. Shooting something out on the horizon. Now you would think, I'm doing the wrist grab or the shoulder grab, that I'd be wanting to press apart. But what that happens, what happens when you do that, and I've seen people do, they've seen this technique before, and what they'll do is they'll grab their wrist or their elbow, and they'll actually pull apart, thinking that makes a more stable um, triangle with their body. And it does, but what it causes is it causes your muscles to fight each other. Okay, so all I'm doing is a steady hold. Same thing applies to vertical, okay? Except I have to raise my elbows up. Might look ungainly, get you the shot, that's all that matters, right? Okay, elbow lock, wrist lock. Let's go over that again. See how steady this is? See how steady this isn't? Watch the muscles fight each other. Now I'm not gripping the lens. Some people are actually gripping onto the Gorilla Grip, but I'm just lightly holding the lens. Even that much is too much muscle fight. Okay, now let's try it my way. Much better. Wrist lock. I use this for down low. Some people have longer arms. Same thing with vertical, except I have to raise my elbows up. Ungainly? Who cares? You get the shot. Low light telephoto, I don't care if it's a 2.8. 60th of a second to 60th of a second. Doesn't matter if it's a 2.8 lens or f4.5 lens. Okay, camera shake is camera shake. You don't want muscles fighting each other. The thing in shooting, thing in archery, same thing they talk about a firm handshake versus too strong of a grip. You got muscles constantly fighting. And if those muscles that are fighting each other, back and forth, left and right, up and down, are touching your camera, okay? More surface area equals greater torque and tension on your camera. Landscape or portrait, no difference. Now you've seen a tripod collar on this lens, but that doesn't apply. I'm not actually touching it. Nothing to do with it. Doesn't get in the way, I straddle it. So you've got a tripod collar, straddle it, or remove it. So I hope I can give you some techniques. This, wrist grab, elbow grab. Train with it for 20 minutes. Vastly improve your low light photography. And remember the heart hug on your camera. Like this. Black rapid strap, fine, no big deal. Bring it right here. No matter where you go, what you do, swing it through the doorways. Your gear will swing out. Centrifugal. Boom, smack into that. Break your fine element. I've seen it more than a few times. Really expensive lenses. Someone's like, well, i got a black rapid strap, and they go swing it through the doorway, and your gear flings out, and it hits it. I was like, oh, shit, I just broke the front element on my expensive lens. Okay? Why do you think you see paparazzis running down the street like this? Okay? Doesn't matter how good the sling is, doesn't matter how good the strap is. Like this. Right? Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. No more rants about uh, mirrorless nonsense. And uh, I will catch you.